Okay, we're back. We're live. We're trying to make our way through a very difficult time. You know, in case you forgot, in case you got distracted, we have this um, awful, disastrous, uh, calamitous, uh, international COVID pandemic going on every day. And uh, uh, Trump will try to distract us. Things will happen uh, to take our attention off it, but we can never, ever forget. So uh, I guess, you know, uh, you had a good question just before the show began, Winston. Let's talk about what's happening locally, because I think Trump has, you know, he's he's um, he's blamed the states and he's relegated the whole matter to the states. He's essentially ignored it and said it's going to go away with lie after lie, distraction after distraction. But what's happening in Hawaii? Because that's not a good story. Well, I, I mean, we simply just came out five minutes ago that the, on August 13th, which uh, was, I, I guess it's yesterday's news, 355 new cases, which is, I mean, the high before that I thought was a shocker was 220. Remember, we were at zero cases, basically, at the end of May, the beginning of June. For about three days, we had that there. So whatever conspired to have this, whether it's lax uh, people going out and having parties or not thinking that it's real, or, um, you know, the military and airline crews were allowed in here, as far as I'm aware, without having to go through um, the same 14 day quarantine. So they were exempted from that. And we don't know how many are coming from the bases. Um, that's a, a, a secret, literally, from uh, the military and the state, obviously, isn't going to report that. So I'm just wondering if that's where there's been some bleed over. We've had city hall shut down because there was a scare there and apparently like um, uh, a retirement party happened there. Uh, you have Tulsi Gabbard. Who's Doesn't called, the mayor uh, control city hall? Well, the mayor does control city hall. He I let that he, happen? He wasn't at the party and it goes con it, it was contrary to his instructions, but it just goes to, to show you that. And they, they socially distanced and they had it outside and all of that. And they said they couldn't trace any things originally. Then they backtracked and said, maybe some came from it, but they don't know. Maybe it was the break room. I think the point is, is that it, right now, this is out of control. We each, we can only control our own environment at this point and, and try and um, just rely on the good faith of others. But I think the police chief is right that she gave out a thousand tickets or arrest for people violating the quarantine. And that is what we need at this point is just to say, you need to stay at home and stop all the shenanigans. I don't, the school starting in a month, whose great idea is that? That, that can't happen uh, if we're gonna control the spread or have any chance of it at all. And we had the mayor come out a couple of days ago and say, we could be the next New York and not in a good way. So I think we have a lot of challenges facing us locally. And really, well, we don't, uh, we don't, as you know, happens. we don't we don't have a, a testing system. <clears throat> well, we do have a testing you know, system. The, but we talked about this at the last show. There, <clears throat> there was a budget passed by the legislature providing ninety million dollars for the airport, and one of the items on that shopping list was a testing system. You know, sort of a high tech testing system. Um, Governor Ige uh, cut that with a line item cut to 70 million. <clears throat> and, and at best, it's going to include um, temperature of a crowd where the, the crowd can see if anyone in it, I mean, the, the system can see if anyone in the crowd has, has temperature. But you know what? I like to go on record about this. There are a lot of people who shed virus all over town who don't have temperature. Who's kidding whom? That's right. And we it also doesn't, it doesn't have, work. The other thing is we don't have contract tracing. And we've, we've heard that it's 14 people that are contract tracing and 100 people and 200 people and 70 people. It's all over the map. And the paper pointed this out rightly today. Like how many people are there? And Josh Green says, we need whatever it is. We need hundreds of people to do contract tracing. But when you got 355 new cases, how long do you think that takes for each person to have reasonable contact tracing, especially when one of those people went down to a beach party with her best 15 friends. Uh, we're not, we're not enforcing here, it's very clear. But uh, Stephanie, uh, you're an educator. I'd like to ask you about the, you know, the, uh, the administration's push, which continues to have kids go back to school. And some of the governors who are friendly to the Trump administration are pushing every day, despite all these incredible numbers, 
And you told me before the show that we, we had um, 1,500 deaths now in a given day. So the numbers are going up nationally. Um, why don't we just send them back to school? Uh, why is the Trump administration wrong and how wrong is it by pushing that? Well, here, I mean, in um, Hawaii, I've heard um, uh, leaders say that the teachers just feel completely abandoned. It's just been um, this, this remarkable a mirroring of the president so that all of the, the get the governors given all the principals make their own decisions about all the schools. And so just like the president's giving all the governors the, um, you know, to make the, the decisions about all of the states. So teachers are, um, are very um, frightened as they should be. They're, they're, they're emotionally involved because they love their students and miss them so badly. But now they're kind of like, have you heard of this, uh, these people that are kind of dicing and chopping it. So um, there's this new guy that um, is on, and his name is <laughs> Atlas. His name is Dr. Atlas, and he's the new, the new uh, Fauci for Trump. And uh, he's all about the way Trump wants to do it. And so one of the ways he's he's justifying the way Trump wants to do it, which is everybody back at school, because you know, when you slice and dice the population, most of the teachers are under 44, which is somehow a cutoff for young versus more at risk group. So those other teachers, they could stay home and they, or they could do the virtual teaching or the online teaching. And then the kids of course don't get it or they get it very, very mildly and recover fast. So we've got somebody now in the ear of the president again, that's making recommendations that are not scientifically based. And th we're gonna be hearing more about this Dr. Atlas. He's strong and he's on, and he's not scientific evidence-based in his thinking. So- hey, Tim, 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 I wanna to go to you for a minute. You know, these moves by the administration, lying about it, um, saying that young people don't get it, saying that 99% uh, of uh, our, our are like a, a common cold or a sniffle, a sniffle, I think. Um, you know, they're, they seem to be really crazy because the numbers going up. Although I tell you, there's an issue about uh, Trump's uh, removal of the data from the CDC. That's coming to light now, that he's manipulating the number that, it, that has been bypassing the CDC. But um, it seems clear enough to the country that it's going up, it's their town, it's their city, it's their state. Um, it's so obvious to the country. And yet the bikers go to North Dakota. Um, some governors are trying to open the schools. They're being as stupid as they can possibly be by following Trump around. How, how will this affect the election? How can he hope to win by making these moves which are so stupid? Why does he make stupid moves like this? Well, Jay, I'm reminded of the old quote, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. And I'll tell you one, one, one group of people you're never going to fool, and that's the moms, the mothers and fathers of this country. And they're not going to allow their children to be used as um, a political shield so Donald Trump can get things moving along so that people will say, we've normalized, let's reelect Donald Trump. Um, what you've done is, well, what Donald Trump has done, he has, he has reduced the credibility of the administration on how to deal with this virus. If, if everyone now starts to believe that everything is uh, a statement for political gain, then when we really need people to respond to uh, how we uh, uh, approach this virus, be it either through a vaccine or a treatment, um, that credibility is gone. And we may have a significant portion of the population fearful to take any kind of vaccine because they don't know if Donald Trump is pushing another form of uh, hydrochloroquine or some other, you know, quack medicine. Yeah. And so well, as, far as, as far as how it's going to result, I, I think it's going to result in votes and, 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 and ultimately his removal from office in less than 85 days. I hope so, but he's, he's put the fit to the election. I mean, there are, I, I just want to go down my little list. One, we have Russia who is trying to do uh, um, the, uh, the, you know, those active measures and uh, as they did before, but worse, uh, trying to twist people's thinking. Um, two is you have the suppression where the Republicans in many states 
have, have made you know, legislation uh, that suppresses voting. Three is, uh, we've seen plenty of this. We've seen the gerrymandering in a number of states, which you know, likewise suppresses voting. Um, we have seen, um, well, we, we've seen the, the, the possibility of the machines being hacked. Um, and of course, don't forget the post office. Um, so so uh, I, want to, I want to ask you, Winston, we have a question came in. In light of all of that, this is the question. Where are our web geeks who know how to enable secure online election as one means for democracy in each state election um, of our president? Why are we not uh, circumventing this idiot and isolating his influence using technology? Um, why not? And is, does this give you a possibility for comfort? Well, I, I mean, it's, I, I suppose it's related to, to Corona as, as Donald Trump is, has touches everything in our nation. But, uh, you know, I've watched shows where the, the, these kids, these machines are, are easily hacked like by, by 12 year olds, um, depending on how they can get into their codes. So I, although there are ways certainly to have secure electronic elections, I'm sure, um, right now, I, I'm advocating that the paper ballots, if we can't even get this nation on board to accept that we can vote by mail, our, one of our most secure and, and steadfast and, and, and important institutions in the nation is the mailman. You want to see how the mailman works. Watch The Postman with Kevin Costner, uh, an oldie but a goodie. Um, just to see what the postman represents for our society on that level. It's a good movie, but it bears refreshing. I don't know. Maybe we go, we go back to the way they do it in India, where everybody gets a red um, thumb after they vote with indelible ink that they cannot wash off that says, I voted today, and a paper trail with, with multiple parties um, that, are, that are counting these votes all the way up and, 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 sh and getting accurate counts. This is not rocket science. It's done around the world and from the first world to the third world. Why we haven't gotten it down in this country is beyond me. So it's, it's a great question. I don't have the answer right now, but after this election, we need to secure this system so that it is tamper proof as much as humanly possible. Well, let me assure you that if Trump is reelected and there's a possibility with all of those factors in play that he will be reelected, I'm sorry to tell you that. He's not going to do anything to fix the election system. He likes it the way it is because he can manipulate it grossly, immorally, illegally, criminally. Uh, so, you know, Stephanie, uh, what, you know, what about this? Uh, you know, I remember the pictures of people waiting online. Was it in Georgia for an early primary to vote? They waited in the rain. They waited in the cold. It's like, you know, remember the old thing about the postman through rain and sleet and, and hail and everything? Well, now it's the voters. <laughs> waiting online. And then, and then, of course, the postmen are being demoralized because it, uh, Trump um, knocked off 23 of their senior executives and, uh, and he's got all these programs going to slow the mail down. And uh, yesterday there was a discussion on MSNBC about, about Louis DeJoy, who's doing this on behalf of Trump, and whether he is a criminal and whether he should be prosecuted. Um, and, and I think that's a legitimate question. Uh, don't put me on that jury, I'll tell you right now. But the problem is, are people going to be affected? Is this election going to be affected um, by, by COVID? Because it, is, it almost seems that Trump wants there to be a huge pandemic where everybody is sick, everybody is dying, and everybody is scared. And, and he's playing on the fear. You know, demagogues do that, playing on the fear. So they're afraid to vote or afraid to take steps to preserve our democracy. What's the connection? The chaos. The chaos is what he wants. That's where he flourishes and that's where his influence is strongest. So that whatever you say about that is definitely true. So he wants the chaos. And also all those people standing in line, some huge percentage of them did get sick. So getting back to coronavirus, that would, would also take people down if we have to go to the post office in the la at the last minute Etc. that postman's not going to come, so you better run your papers down. But yesterday on the uh, shows, on the national shows, they had that postmaster woman. I'm sorry, I don't know her name, but she's a powerhouse of getting it out. 
And she said that there's thousands of people in this organization and we have the capacity to get this election done. So I think by virtue of the fact that we're only 60 days out or something like that, um, it looks, she says that we, it will happen, it will get done, but the, you, the people, the population needs to get their ballot in immediately. As soon as you get your hands on it, you got to get it in the mail or take it to wherever they say you can take it. So that was very reassuring because she's a pretty tough leader, it looks like. They've got that under she control. She was a union leader. She was a union leader, not a manager. Union? Not okay. a manager. Managers exactly. run the organization, not the union. That's true. In a federal organization. But that's an assessment and she and, and her judgment. And she said she'll be coming back on to assure uh, that, that it can be done. So okay. I-, I well, Let me I, ask Tim. Tim, how confident are you that this election is going to be straight? Um, I'd give it about a 60-40 right now. 60 and in I, favor? 60, 60 in favor that we'll election. get re reliable results. Um, but those numbers are falling for me. And uh, when I hear reports of the uh, sorting machines being dismantled, um, there is no other reason for them to be dismantled than direct result of slowing down the mail. If I can't sort it, I can't deliver it. Uh, uh, well, Jay, I, is there any way to, your attorney, may, maybe you know some more about the government. Who can, who can intervene? That's the biggest question. That's the biggest question. You know, because it's not going to be, I trust me on this, it's not going to be the attorney general. It's not going to be anybody in the line of command in the post office. Might be the unions, but they're unions. They're not management. Um, I, I don't know. You know, the only, the only possibility, honestly, and there are people dedicated to this, is the courts. Go to the courts and file lawsuits. Okay. Seek injunctions. Try to change what Louis DeJoy is doing. What, what do you want to say, Tim? I'd like to say that I think there's going to be a message from the Democrats to say, if you suspect your mail's not going to, your vote's not going to count because of, of slow mail, take the steps to take it directly to an election deposit box. Take it to the depository where the election ballots are collected. And people may do that in mass because this election is so important to so many people. They may just say, I'm driving, I'm driving downtown. Who wants to come with me? Bring your ballots. Let's drop them off together. Let's have a party. Yeah, and I, and I sense that the union woman, and there's also a, a national union guy who speaks about this, forget his name, but um, you know, th there's another element here, and that is the, these, these dedicated members of the Postal Service, it goes back to that movie and beyond, Winston, um, those, they may decide to work overtime free. They may decide to you know, not, not allow the joy to slow them down. They may put the time in and make sure this happens on behalf of all of us. I would love to see that. That's well, why. I, that's why I think we had to we had to tip the postman every day. Every day. I agree. I agree. I support that. Let's do it. That's a great idea, and I don't. But I I would bet, given the administration what what is proposed, is that they will prohibit any workers from working overtime because there's a federal, some kind of federal law that says you can't have them work overtime unless they're getting paid. And so, it will pro, and, it, and it includes voluntary labor. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. because that's, that's they true. don't want people to, uh, you know, uh, be abused. So they would enforce that system that if you are working off the clock or beyond your allotted time, you will be fired uh, under this law. I would not be surprised at all. And, you know, as far as Tim's suggestion of going down and, and delivering, it's a great idea for all the folks that, here in Hawaii, we just had double the number of people voting, I think, as, as the previous primary because of voting by mail. But I remember I did go down to City Hall a number of years ago. It was probably 2004, maybe it was eight. It was after the Bush v. Gore. There was a line out the door for the two machines that spit out of, uh, that, were, that were paper. Um, there were eight or 10 electronic voting machines that had no one waiting at them nobody wanted to use the electronic machines because they didn't trust the results that that someone wouldn't turn a dial or a knob and then they would have no paper trail of their vote so uh as far as these elections being secure how well, are there some it, it, it be a lawsuit. they have these boxes that you drop your ballot in but there's like one box in the county maybe it's yeah, not like it's not like, like it used to be or could no. be it's it's very limited and uh, I'm, not even, I'm, not, I'm not even sure that it's present in Hawaii. 
even let me, let me shift to one more thing, Winston. One more thing. Sure. So we we have we have um, Kamala Harris changes the paradigm, um, and it was encouraging to see her do her thing yesterday with uh, Joe Biden. Um, and I guess the question I have is is and we're talking about COVID here on the show. Um, the fact that they call his lies out now more than they did before. He wants to make a lie about COVID. They're going to call him out. It's going to be day by day. He says stuff, they counter it. Um, is this going to change the paradigm about um, the way the public conversation is taking place, the way the, the people are thinking about the election, the way the, the people are respecting or disrespecting what he's doing? Um, how does Kamala Harris's entry onto the stage change things between now and the election? Well, you know, she has said that she is going to approach this from a prosecutorial um, mindset and essentially put, you know, the, uh, the administration on trial, as it were, uh, for its misdeeds, missteps, corruption, mismanagement, all of it. Uh, obviously, it's not a real trial, but she has that experience of the evidence. She says it's, a, it's an open and shut case. It's slam dunk. That said, who's she going to be preaching to? The choir. Um, and... And is Fox going to cover her? Is the America One Network going to cover her? Are they going to get one tiny word that 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 uh, or a tiny soundbite that misrepresents what she's trying to say? So I don't know that it'll have anything. But who knows? Maybe she's going to reach some people, some 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 people that are that really have strong reservations, and they're looking for a different voice. She's the only one providing a different voice at this point. So hopefully she will. You know, I I I. I I look at a nation like New Zealand, didn't have COVID for a hundred days. And then they have this wonderful prime minister. Soon as they got a case out, she immediately locks down the city. She says, no schools, no childcare. If you're an essential worker, they have they had an outbreak of four cases. Now it's grown to 17. They're not sure where they're coming from. They immediately shut down again because they realize that's when you, that's political leadership. That is how it gets done. What makes this really complex is that Trump's dog whistle approach um, seems to be working. I mean, think of Sturgis, North Dakota, with those, I mean, hundreds of thousands of people without masks, without caring, drinking in the bars, they're all gonna get sick, morons. Um, and then of course you got the QAnon uh, candidate somewhere in the South there, one on a primary in the Republican primary. So Tim, I mean, we get we have we have a swelling of Trump's um, of Trump's dog whistle thing, and they're coming in from left field now. And uh, you know, when um, when uh, uh, Winston said it may it may not go outside the bounds of the the regular people in the Democratic Party, and uh, Kamala Harris may not be able to affect the, the dog whistle people. Um, what's your thought about that? I mean, is this I well, mean, this doesn't help me get optimistic. Well, you know, you and I talked, I don't know, maybe it was a week ago. And remember, what finally made the Vietnam War um, ever on the front pages and, and then in people's minds and hearts was uh, middle America was losing their, their sons in the war. It was affecting them personally. And I think in a matter of a month or month and a half, you're going to see much more of the red states start to see the realities of, of, of these political bold um, maneuvers of not wearing masks, a meeting at Sturgis, uh, over 200,000 bikers meeting at Sturgis, those people are going to go back home and those people are going to start getting sick and a certain percentage of them are going to die. And once a death occurs in your family or your extended family, you start to realize, what have I done? What have I done to follow Donald Trump blindly? And yet now I have a family member that's perished. And I think in the next month and a half, two months, that reality is going to start happening. And it already is, actually. It already is in the red states. But I think it's going to happen further. Well, you know, Stephanie, uh, there's so much. You talk about the word chaos. We, we really got it. And there's even chaos in the legitimate press over exactly how it's spread um, and what, um, you know, what the immune system does. And, and is, is Fauci right or is he wrong? And uh I mean, I, I'm, I'm really getting confused. It's hard to hold a track on this. And, and, and is the Russian um, you know, uh, uh, vaccine gonna work even a little? 
Uh, is the Chinese vaccine going to work even a little? And where is our vaccine? Is it real? Um, you know, he wants to tell you it's going to happen on November 2nd, right? That's what he wants to tell you. And on the, I guarantee you, November 2nd, he's going to be touting his vaccine uh, as a lie. Um, so I guess, you know, the, the question I, I would put to you is, uh, what, you know, what about that? Um, people are getting more confused, not less. People are getting more concerned and scared with the increase in the numbers, not less. How is the country reacting to this? Um, it's got to be having a profound effect, not only the disease itself, but all this talk about lockdown. Well, I think that um, it's, uh, well, I share the hopes of Tim and also of, of Winston. Winston's point about the, the media is so important because no matter what Trump and Kamala do, they've got to get it out. It's same thing with the virus. No matter how much virus we have sitting on the shelf, it's got to get out. So how is that going to happen? And our media is only being attended to. I mean, we've all heard the stories about they only listen to one set of media. And so CNN Stone here's got Fox and Fox doesn't listen to CNN. So where's Kamala going to get that info out? So, so there's that and the issue of we have no one in power. The power person is this chaotic idiot who's putting us in such disarray and in such danger. And now he's got this Scott Atlas, Dr. Scott Atlas is the new Corona advisor whose main message this morning was that this, well, this is hysteria. There's hysteria. You asked me about the schools earlier. It's hysteria about the schools. So we have really been blocked out. So the, yes, he works in chaos, but the chaos has got a fairly regimented effect and a dire effect. We have no means of communicating. So that, that's what um, the Kamala and, and, and Joe have to figure out what to do about that and how to make it available to everybody what they have to say. Because right now we're already putting all this out on CNN and certainly MSNBC and, 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 and the NPR. And who listens to any of that? They're listening to well, watch. you know if you if you believe in, um, in in Trump's ability to innovate distraction, you know that between now and ninety days or whatever it is 80, 85 days from now, uh, there will be many many distractions that he will generate. More Talking can about movies, remember the mouse that roared, uh, Dustin Dustin Hoffman. It was a wonderful movie about how you can create uh, fictitious distractions false emergencies and change public opinion overnight. And we are going to see, this is good, a really interesting ride. Oh, we have a question. Um, okay. Uh, what do you think of the Russian vaccine? Well, that, that's an easy one. Winston, what do you think of the Russian vaccine? Uh, I'm going to wait for whatever the Germans come out with. And <laughs> Or the Swiss. Well, I guess let me put it this way. Do you believe uh, Putin more than you believe Trump, Stephanie? Absolutely not. And I think that we're also informed by his willingness to inoculate his children. I think that that speaks to another dimension of this, which is pretty dark, way dark, because those they have not had enough time to get that right. Let's see. But then on the other hand, it was probably a hoax. They probably never got those injections. I'll put money on that. <laughs> I do that. I mean, you'll put up, you'll do all the things. But Tim, we're good. almost out of time, and I want to I want to leave you with one question. You're you're a good predictor. Um, predict for me the next week or two. What is what is going to happen here? Because all the <laughs> I'm sorry to say, all the signs are dreadful. What do you think is going to happen? And by the way. I'm going to ask Winston the same question afterward, and he can be optimistic. But what's your view of the, the prognosis? I, I think you're going to see um, a, a greater um, protest about uh, dismantling the, the post office and the overt things that are being done to slow down the mail. I think you're going to start seeing um, uh, attempts to actually try to address this on an injunction type of basis, some kind of legal maneuver, and things that we've never seen before. I think that's happening in the next week or so, because I think it's becoming more and more an outrageous that this election is being uh, thwarted 
as a result of Donald Trump's fear of being thrown out of office and then prosecuted by the South Manhattan District. Oh, wow, that rings true, doesn't it? Winston, uh, try to hold your optimism back, will you? I am not feeling particularly optimistic today, um, especially with the surge in cases here locally. But as I've said before, at this point, you the only person you can control right now is yourself. And that that is all you can do. And even then, that's hard. So individual responsibility, societal responsibility, let's all up our game. And, uh, and work to um, contain and control this virus uh, and, and, and be kind to each other. And we got a lot of challenges in front of us, but with this spike here, I'm not feeling particularly optimistic right now, but we shall overcome. This too shall pass. And I, I agree with Tim, we've got a lot more coming down the pike in the next week. It's impossible to drink from this fire hose. And this show needs to be a 24 seven news channel, honestly. Yeah, really, really, we gotta do more than, okay, uh, uh, Stephanie, I feel bad that I didn't give you a last, a last shot at things. What is your last shot? Be afraid, be very afraid. Okay, well, let's leave it there. Uh, that'll, that'll get people interested if they weren't before. Um, there's so much more to come, as you said, Tim. Uh, Tim Apicella, Stephanie Dalton, Winston Welch, thank you for doing the show. It's very important, not only to think, but to, and its viewers, but to the entire community. Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha.